Hello, I'm John. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Horn Telescope. This is some uh, information that's going to be useful when you do the introduction to a Horn Telescope activity with your students. So we're going to overview just the basics of the telescope and what it's measuring and what's being displayed on the computer. So we're going to start off by looking at the actual physical horn here. And this is the horn. And um, you can see it on the stand. And if you look inside the horn, at the very bottom there, you can see that little piece of metal wire poking down. And that is a, um, the antenna. It is an antenna. It's picking up radio signals from whatever's coming into the horn. And once it comes into the, uh, to the antenna, then the signal is fed out to the small device here, which is the uh, low noise amplifier. We call that the LNA. From there, the signal is fed through this cable, and it goes to this software defined radio which is the we air the air spy in this case it takes the signal and digitizes it and then feeds it into the computer and then the computer will uh, display our results of what's being read and I'm trying to figure out how to get I don't know where the mouse is <laughs> oh there it is all right so what we're looking at here is uh, the, the graphical display that's shown with the uh, spectrometer program in GNU Radio. And you can see there's several things on this that uh, are going to be of interest, and some of it's not particularly interesting uh, for our purposes. Uh, we'll start at the top. There's some information about the scaling of the y-axis and something about uh, which display you're showing and what while uh, how you're right saving your data and that's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, the main graph, the big graph in the middle, is showing signal on the y-axis and uh, frequency on the x-axis. And so what this is showing is this, this horn is collecting the signal uh, with the antenna and it's collecting it at all those different frequencies and displaying what signal is at each of those frequencies. So here we're going from 14 114 megahertz to 1424 megahertz, uh, which is sort of like scanning through a radio dial continuously and displaying the signal always. Um, the bottom three graphs have to do with some system information that uh, right now is not needed for our purposes. The only thing to mention is that the bottom right graph that um, count and values graph should always be shimmering. It's sort of like your heart rate monitor. If it stops shimmering, that means your program is not collecting data anymore. All right, let's focus now on this graph, the big graph, the signal versus frequency graph in the middle. That is displaying the signal that's coming into the horn, and that's, does it, whatever comes in gets displayed. So it depends on where the horn is being pointed. Right now, now let's, uh, let's I'm gonna switch screens here, and we're going to, um, show the horn is pointing kind of upward into the sky okay and if we look at the screen you can see that there's nothing of too much interest there but we change it so that the horn is going more upward um, so we're showing it straight up what you can see on the output graph is there is a, a small little hump here that occurs just above the 1420 uh, megahertz uh, frequency. That is actually the radio signal that we're interested in for radio astronomy. Okay. Now, there looks like there's all these other features on this graph, but it turns out those are just part of the system and that those signals are sort of always there. So for instance, if we take our horn and point it, say, to a tree over here, okay, um, we're pointing it uh, way off to the side here at a tree, you can see that that little hump at the 1420 has disappeared 
the graph itself has gotten a little bit higher up, but the, that general shape here of the of the rising up and flattening out, and then there's a big lump at the end, and it drops back down. That feature is always there, and that is just part of this electronics in the system, and um, that is not of interest to us. So students tend to get focused on that, and that's something that that they're going to you know be curious about, but we will realize in the end that that can all be filtered out and uh, in, the next, in another video we'll explain how that's going to work and how we can really just focus on the, the signal that's at the center. So if we go back up into the sky, okay, um, you can see that the, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this, um, On this graph, so you can really kind of see that lump. So I, I zoomed in a little bit. You can see that this lump now is, is a little bit bigger. And so it's the feature that we're interested in. Now, if we move it slowly across the sky a little bit. Um, so we're just moving, we're, we're scanning across the sky, and what you can see is that that lump is there, but it starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and it eventually will pretty much disappear, because now we're looking at the sky where there really isn't any of this uh, source of this radio signal, which is hydrogen in the galaxy, and that's something that uh, we'll, we'll talk about in other uh, activities. So. From this, you should be able to de demonstrate to your students that this source, that, the, that that lump is, is not from the earth, but it's from somewhere in the sky, and it's not from a single point in the sky. It's somewhere out there, and that turns out to be our galaxy. All right, see you on the next video.